So we left off in our note packet on this page. Five main sources of law in the U.S. So our first main source of law are federal and state constitutions. Does everybody have their note packet out? The second is common law. God bless you. The third are statutes. The fourth are court decisions. And the fifth are administrative laws. And we're going to talk about what each of these are in the next several slides. Are we good? Go. Okay. So, the first, federal and state constitutions. First, the constitution or a constitution is a formal document that lays out the laws of a specific society, the basic principles of governance for that particular society, or in our case, country. And the area of law that deals with the Constitution is what we call constitutional law. It be basically sets out the laws created by a country's constitutions. Constitution, pardon me. <coughs> So in the United States, our U.S. Constitution is what we call the supreme law of the land. The Constitution itself consists of seven articles. The first three articles deal with the branches of power, the main branches of power, which are the legislative body, the president, and the court systems. So that's important for you to understand, especially as we're dealing with the article that you guys read today. For the legislature, president, and the court system. It also sets the boundaries for both the federal and state power. It also outlines the rights of the people in what we call the amendments to the Constitution, which are, right, the first ten amendments to the Constitution are the Bill of Rights. There are presently 27 amendments in total. But just those first 10 are the Bill of Rights. Did you guys pick up a copy of the Bill of Rights last class? It was a single sheet of paper that listed the Bill of Rights. You sh if you didn't, you, you'll, you will in a little while, okay? The last <laughs> item or the last article in the Constitution basically says that whatever powers are not enunciated in the Constitution as, as it relates to the federal powers are left to the states. <coughs> so the state constitutions, each of the states has its own constitution. 
What's really important here is that the state constitutions can't be in conflict with uh, the U.S. Constitution. If they are, technically speaking, the U.S. Constitution prevails, meaning it's, it's the supreme authority prevails. <clears throat> of our laws. The second set of our or se second source of our laws is what we call common law. This is the set of laws that is created over time through typically speaking through customs, judgments or decisions and they later uh, those judgments or decisions later set what we call precedent and I'll explain that concept in just a minute. Common law is what the English colonists brought over with them from England, except for in Louisiana, because Louisiana was a French territory. So in Louisiana, they followed the Napoleonic Code. So it's the only state that differs. All the other states follow what we call English common law. So write that down, English common law. So these are like when the, when the colonists came over, there might have been uh, ways of handling certain legal matters back when, com uh, when people were in England. So when they came over to the United States, they brought their common ways of handling legal issues with them. That was one of the foundations or sources of our laws when our country was forming, when it was you know, just getting started. So we call it common law. It's just basically what was commonly believed. And, and a lot of those laws are still how we handle things today. That body of law is continuing to evolve. That body of law is what we call precedent. Okay, so a previous case or decision becomes the foundation for future cases of a similar nature. So when a court decision is made, however that court decides the case, that will become precedent for how similar cases are decided later on. So some of my students who are in mock trial, we kind of use that all already or, or frequently in our, in our trials because we look at how other cases are handled and then we refer to them and then we'll use them in our arguments for why the decision in our case that we're trying, should be tried in that fashion. We'll use that prior decision. So that's the law of precedent. <clears throat> and it goes under the premise of what we call stare decisis, which is the concept that we're going to let the decision stand. So the decision in a previous case is an example for how the decision should be made in a current case. It only changes when a higher court rules that it should be changed, okay? And we'll learn about the court systems next week, but if there's a trial court case, that trial court decision becomes the decision, um, becomes the basis for future trial court cases. If that case gets overridden at a higher court level on appeal, then that, that appeal might change the decision. Statutes, our third source of law. The body of law that deals with statutes is called statutory law. These are any laws that are created by legislative bodies. Our legislative bodies are like the Senate, Congress, okay, um, there are legislative bodies. They're who we vote in our legislators to um, help create our laws based on what we believe. So we vote them in. And then theoretically, we're voting in the people that we think are going to support the positions that we care about. 
So statutory law. You have both federal statutes and state statutes. So again, if a statute is created at a state level, it can't, um, it can't be in disagreement with a federal law. And these statutes can require you to do things or forbid you from doing things. Can require you to pay taxes, forbid you to, um, you know, murder somebody. And again, they can't be in conflict with the Constitution, nor can state statutes violate federal laws. <clears throat> Some examples of like state level statutes might be if they create a statute, say, like you can't drive and text. Okay, that would be an example. Um, there might be federal statutes <coughs> relating to the environment, um, things of that sort. And that on a more local level, what we have what are called ordinances. So these are laws that are passed by your like town or your um, city governmental bodies. Okay, so you like we have a town council. Okay, Golan Town Council. They might vote in certain laws. Typically speaking, at a more local level, you might have things like zoning laws or um, other, like, you know, maybe like a curfew, things of that sort that are put in place. And again, our local ordinances can't be in violation of any state or federal laws. Then our fourth is court decisions. How do the courts play a role in actually making the laws? <clears throat> Technically speaking, our court systems don't make the law. Okay? The Constitution makes the law. Um, the statutes make the law. Common law comes about as a result of decisions in prior cases. And it sort of relates to these court decisions here. Okay? <coughs> So we have creation of the law, common law, tradition, and precedent. So if a law is created, the courts ruling in it, on it and interpreting the law can result in a decision coming about. Okay? So we're going to talk about that with our Bill of Rights case that we discussed, that we read before. And then lastly, they'll decide whether a law is in conflict with the Constitution. Again, what we're dealing with in our article that we read earlier. So the courts, they play a really, really important role. Their primary thing is they're going to look at laws that have been created, and they actually can create a law based on their interpretation of things that are going on that are uh, brought into uh, a court case and then they make a decision on it. And the only way that their decision can be overturned is by a higher court. Good? Okay. And then the last area of law is administrative law. These are laws that are created, again, by a governmental body of, called a regulatory agency. So a regulatory agency can be an agency of the government that is created either by, um, can be either created by a governor in, in a state or the president at the federal level or even can be created 
by the legislative body 